Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you a quick way of texturing scenes in Blender for your illustrations. It's a great way to add real world details fast and pretty easy. Procedural textures are amazing, but sometimes it's faster and a lot less complex to just use details from photos or images you create. You don't always need textures that are endlessly tweakable, especially when you're just creating a base render for an illustration. And that is where the Texture Atlas comes in. If you're not familiar, a Texture Atlas in its most basic form is just a group of images arranged into a grid. It usually doesn't contain any information like roughness or bump maps. Creating the texture itself is pretty simple. You're just arranging a set of images in a grid using your photo editor of choice. Here I'm using Photoshop. The size of the image can be any orientation you find useful, but efficiency is the key consideration here. Keep it lightweight, but high enough resolution to not lose detail. Here I'm using a round of 4K image at 120 DPI, which is probably overkill. One thing to keep in mind is Blender supports PSDs, so if you're using Photoshop, you can just save the file and use it as is. Or if the file size is a concern, you can just export as a JPEG. So just experiment, find what works for you. I do it at this resolution because I'm not worried about resources. I'm just creating a group of images that I'm going to use as an illustration and I want the best possible resolution that I can use. The images that work best are flat and don't show a lot of curvature. You can see here that these are all flat. They don't have a lot of light information and they'll be easy to use on a model. If you're using stock images, each item in the grid should only contain the parts of the image that you'll use. So don't include images that have sky in them, for example. You can see that I'm hiding that in this one because that's not a useful piece of the image. It's not going to stop you from using the image, but it'll end up being something you have to work around. So it goes against the whole purpose of this technique, which is efficiency. Try to use single image textures that can be repeated over model. So where can you find these images? Stock images from sites like Envato Elements can work, but it usually takes longer to find good images and sometimes they still require editing to use. I find prepared images from a site like CG Textures are more useful because they're already in a format that we need. They do offer a free account where you can get 15 textures per day and I find that more than enough. Other than that, just have fun, be creative. You can also hand paint images or even use weird abstract effects for unique looks. Okay, so once your atlas is laid out, to apply the texture, you're going to add the image you created as a texture on your object. So pull this up, go into Shader Editor. Using Node Wrangler, I can just hit Control T and it will load all of this up automatically. So I can just open this, go to where I have it saved, load it in, and we have our texture on here. So if you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, you should. It's included in Blender, you just enable it in the preferences. These are the nodes that you'll need if you don't have Node Wrangler. So next you're gonna jump over into the UV editor, tab into edit mode. You wanna select all your faces and if it's a simple enough object, you can just hit cube projection. And that way all of your faces will be just a square and that's easier to move around. So you can go through this whole thing selecting individual faces and they'll show up down here in the UV editor or you can click this UV sync selection and it'll show all of your faces at once and that way no matter where you select it it will always show up in the opposite window. Personally I like working with this off and selecting what I need in the scene. Once you have the faces unwrapped, then you can go over the whole object, selecting certain parts, and then down in the UV editor, you just select the section that you need. And you can change how your object looks using one single image rather than trying to use multiple materials all over the same object. You can just use one image, one material, and you can customize how each face looks. And you could even subdivide each face further and then use the smaller subdivisions to detail the object even further. One quick and dirty trick that you can use to get some additional detail in here is to add a RGB to black and white followed by a color ramp and then a bump. And then if you connect that into the normal, you'll see some extra texture here based on the image that you're pumping into this. And as I said, this is a dirty kind of technique to use for illustrations only. You, don't, you probably don't want to use this if you're creating game assets or something that's going to be real close up to the camera but far away it looks good and then keep in mind that the noise in the image is going to affect how this bump looks so if again using node wrangler if we preview the color ramp 
We can also adjust how much of that bump is showing up by just moving the sliders. And it will limit that to some degree. Another quick dirty trick is to connect that same color ramp into a displacement node and then the displacement into the material output. For this, you're gonna to need to turn on displacement and bump in the material settings. Also, you may want to subdivide your object a couple times along with possibly a subdivision surface modifier set to whatever you need to get the appropriate amount of details. That'll also give you some surface texture to go along with the fake texture that comes with the bump mapping because the bump mapping doesn't actually change the surface of the model, it just changes how the light interacts with it, but the displacement actually changes the model and how much or how little it's extruded. It works better with some images than other images, and again, this is not something you wanna do for a close-up shot of something, but far away, it does give you a little bit of extra detail, especially around the edges, which is a good thing for compositional purposes. It's just more interesting to have a broken up edge there. So here's a practical example based on one of the latest images that I've created from a YouTube channel. I've got just a few basic objects here in the scene, and you can see that using that same technique, I've created quick variations of the same type of object, but subtly different. And it's just the same texture used over and over across the whole scene. The only part that's different is these parts with the lights and all I did there was to mix in an emission shader and an image mask to create windows and lights there. You could also use that same image and build a bunch of objects that you could then kit bash to make a whole scene out of. So once the scene is laid out, then I just render it out with a transparent background on it and then I take it over into Photoshop and I start layering in details with photos. So that's it. Uh, I hope that helps you. If you have any other questions, don't forget to comment down below. If you got value out of this, please remember to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with what I'm making, and I will see you in the next one.